Good morning, siblings of Christ. Today is election day, as I'm sure you are all well aware of, which means that we are finally, at least hopefully, coming to the end of what has been an extraordinarily contentious election season. And because we as Christians are called to show God's love regardless of whether our candidate wins or loses, I thought a good way for us to start that this morning would be to start with morning prayer. Now, the resource that I'm using is a book called Common Prayer for or a Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. Um, it's a very good book. It's available on Amazon, um, and it has these liturgies for morning and midday and evening prayer that are very nice. They're short, and I find them helpful in my personal devotional practice. If you don't want to buy the book and you have a smartphone, you can also search Common Prayer in your app store, either the Android app store or the Apple app store, and it is a free download. It'll be like this. You can't see it very well. It says Book of Common Prayer, and it has a little brown square with a cross in the middle, just like what was on the front of the book. That's free, and all of the resources that are in the book are there too. So something easy for you to do, you don't even have to pay money for it. In addition to being Election Day, today is also a day when the church commemorates a person named Martin de Porres. So I'm going to read a little bit about him, and then we'll start our Liturgy of Morning Prayer. So, Martin. Martin was the illegitimate son of a Spanish nobleman in 16th century Peru. He bore the complexion of his black mother. He presented himself at 15 as someone who would, could sweep the floors at a Dominican monastery, but his talents, especially in the art of healing, were soon recognized. As head of, his, as head of the monastery's infirmary, Martin not only treated the brothers, but went out into the streets of Peru and brought in the poor, even offering his own bed for them to sleep in. When Martin was made a saint in 1962, Pope John the 23rd named him patron of all who work for social justice. So somebody for us to keep in mind today, especially as we're just coming off of All Saints and All Souls Day, um, he is somebody who is an example to us in our faith in the ways that we should walk in Christ's love. So let's begin. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you, as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In this book, they have some small little songs at the back. Um, so this morning, we're going to be singing Ubi Caritas, which you can Google. Um, it's a pretty easy tune to remember. So here we go. I'll sing it in the Latin first and then the English. Ubi caritas at amor. Ubi caritas Deus ibi est. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity. God will dwell with you. We continue with our liturgy. You, O Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. Psalm 18, verses 21 through 25. The Lord rewarded me because of my righteous dealing. Because my hands were clean, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the, of the Lord, and have not offended against my God. For all his judgments are before my eyes. 
and his decrees I have not put away from me. For I have been blameless with him, and have kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord rewarded me according to my righteous dealing, because of the cleanness of my hands in his sight. You, O Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. This morning we will read from the book of Joel. It is Joel chapter 1. And I should have had this marked beforehand, but I forgot. Incidentally, there is a Bible app you can get on your phone. Um, it's called the Bible Gateway. It is also a free app, and um, you can look at multiple translations in it. It's very helpful for when you're trying to uh, find a particular verse because you can search for verses. So if you look at, if you go to your app store and search Bible Gateway, um, it'll come right up. And as you can tell, I'm struggling because I can't remember where the book of Joel is. Oh, but da, 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 Joel after Hosea. There he is. Sorry, y'all. Preparation's everything. Okay, so a reading from Joel. Chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and as destruction from the Almighty it comes. Is not the food cut off before our eyes, joy and gladness from the house of our God? The seed shrivels under the clods, the storehouses are desolate, the granaries are ruined because the grain has failed. How the animals groan, the herds of cattle wander about because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep are dazed. To you, O Lord, I cry. For fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and flames have burned all the trees of the field. Even the wild animals cry to you, because the watercourses are dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Revelation the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 12. And I skipped to 19. Not quite. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the smoke and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given authority like the authority of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to damage the grass of the earth or any green growth of any tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torture them for five months, but not to kill them, and their torture was like the torture of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. In appearance, the locusts were like horses, equipped for battle. On their heads were what looked like crowns of gold. Their faces were like human faces, their hair like women's hair, and their teeth like, uh, like lion's teeth. They had scales like iron breastplates, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. They have tails like scorpions and sting with stingers, and in their tails is the power to harm people for five months. They have as a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is Apollon. The first woe has passed. There are still two woes to come. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, you'll notice that uh, <laughs> both of those readings seem a little um, apocalyptic because they are. They're both describing times of great trial and tribulation. And if you've noticed the way things have been going lately, this whole year, 2020, has seemed like trial and tribulation for a lot of people. It has been. It's been rough. But the one constant that runs through both the reading from Joel and the reading from Revelation is God. God's love and God's mercy. Because whatever the trial and tribulations happen to be, at the end of those trials, God is always there. That doesn't mean you need to go out and make yourself suffer. That's not what we're talking about here. But it does mean that in suffering, God is with you and God will be there at the end. And for that, we can all be thankful. So, we close our word section in repeating our earlier proclamation. You, O Lord, are my lamp. My God, you make my darkness bright. A contemporary of Martin de Porres testified he was a man of great charity who being in charge of the infirmary not only healed his brother religious his brother religious when they were sick but also assisted in the larger duty of spreading the great love of the world for this they knew him as their father and consolation calling him father of the poor let us pray for all people and god according to their needs holy and merciful god we pray for all those suffering from covid-19 and any other illnesses. We pray that your healing hand would be with them, that you would calm their fears, and that you would bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray that your hand of calm and peace would be with all those during the selection process. Help those who have yet to make their voices heard come out to the polls and proclaim their view of the country. We ask that you be with our elected leaders, that they would be able to find ways to govern the country, no matter what the, re the results of the election are, and that they would govern not with the idea of political power in their head, but with the idea of grace and mercy and justice for all, as we have so long proclaimed this country stands for. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you be with all those who need you in any way. Those who do not have the comforts of a warm home on this cooler evening and afternoon. Those who have suffered from addiction or other causes that have kept them from living the life that they wanted to live. We pray for those who find mental illnesses to be debilitating, that they would be treated with dignity and help to see how they are a valued part of society. We pray for all those who are the least of these because they are your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lastly, O oh Lord, we pray for our churches all around the world for all those who proclaim the Christian faith, that we would be calm and compassionate and loving, be, and that we would be your actual disciples, living as you have called us to live, to show the world what it really means to be part of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace, mercy, and love that all will be kept in your loving and tender care. Amen. Let us pray now the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, when we open our hands and hearts to the poor, your kingdom is at hand. Remind us that there is always enough to give to those who are in need. Make us generous today with the goods you have entrusted to us. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thanks for tuning in. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.